Welcome to Microsoft Dynamics NAV Toffee Mug Tutorials. I'm Johannes Goodnesson, founder of Enecta, a Microsoft Gold certified partner. Using a coffee mug as an example, I'll show you how to create items, purchase orders, sales orders, manage inventory, and much more. So go ahead and grab your own cup of joe and let's get started. Hello and uh, welcome to the coffee mug tutorials again. Uh, what we want to go over today is uh, back reconciliations. Um, these are always very important uh, in accounting and can be tricky sometimes. Uh, but if you always follow procedures pretty well, uh, then it shouldn't be a big deal. However, in NAV now we have several options, especially in NAV 2016. And it's um, really important that you pick the right things when you're setting up. So we just started a new bank, uh, Chase Bank. This is a brand new bank. Uh, and we have some transactions already hitting this bank. I just want to go over how I set up this bank. I know I did that in a different video. But um, I think it's important to just touch base on that again. And how we post it to this bank. And I will explain how we reconcile as well. So if I go into this bank account, here I have set up the uh, all the standard information for the bank. Um, and the important part here is that we need to set up the last statement number. Uh, I've set that to be four zeros. So when it actually creates a new statement, it will pick 0001. So that's a good running number. Uh, you might have more zeros if you intend to have more than 9,999 uh, reconciliations, that would be quite a few years, but um, but it's important to fill out that field. Also, another thing that you always have to do when you set up an entity that books into the uh, GL, you need to set up a posting group. And in this case, I've created a special posting group for this back called Chase. And if I look at that posting group, that is being mapped to posting account, the GL account, 11,550 in the chart of accounts. This is important. Uh, it's usually good, or almost always, if you want the uh, bank reconciliations to work for you, to have one bank account relate to one GL account. So one-to-one -one relationship between the two. This is because uh, NAV will reconcile the bank towards GL. And if there are more than one banks hitting the same GL, then your bank cracks are going to be off. So this is important. If I go ahead and uh, take a look at this, I go into advanced here, and I will drop into the chart of accounts uh, just to show you how now in my liquid assets, I have something called Chase Bank. This is just for that bank account. Uh, and ideally, we should turn off the direct posting here. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a separate video. So now we have that. Now we already have a, several postings to this account. And I'm going to take a look at those uh, right now. So if I go into the ledger entries, I can see that I have, let's see, about eight postings. Uh, we have some deposits here uh, from customers. And we have uh, payments to vendors. Uh, and then some more uh, deposits. Now, the important part here is that this open field here actually interacts with the back crack. It shows open if it hasn't been reconciled. And if it's closed or open is not checked, then it has been reconciled. So you can see not reconciled items uh, on here. Now, if you want to see the actual deposits or checks, um, you can actually go here, for example, and check ledger entries. And you can see these are the checks that were written up, um, the check number, etc. So not in ledger entries, but in check ledger entries. And you can do similar for deposits. 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump right away into the back accounts reconciliation. Let's see, yeah, here are the deposits. Just quickly show you that. These are the deposits. And if I take a look at those, those are actually consolidated deposits uh, where you have you know, built a deposit slip with the bank and grouped together many payments onto one deposit. All right, so I'm going to go back here, close out, and go into cash management and start my bank account reconciliation. So I just go in here, hit new, and I pick the bank that I want, which is Chase. And now it initializes the uh, bank reconciliation. Now, we are working in the future in the Coffee Mug uh, tutorials. We are in year 17, so our fictional company operates a year in the future of everybody. Makes it uh, a little bit strange, but we deal with it. So my statement date is going to be 3.10.17. This is the uh, statement ending date from the back. And as I put in the uh, the date, it automatically calculates the GL balance. Actually, I'm going to put that on the 31st. Okay. So I have 21,905 in my GL. It's looking straight into the GL here. So this is why it's so important that it's one-to-one -one relationship on the GLs. Um, and then it asks me, okay, so what is the balance on the statement? And my statement balance is actually 26,705.11. So there is already a difference uh, between the GL and the statement. And that's, you know, there could be many reasons for that, and we're going to find that out in a minute. I wouldn't worry about these two fields here too much. They, they are good indicators. Um, you can type them in from the statement, but they do not affect. Uh, clearing out uh, entries on the statement. And the goal, if you look at this as a little game, the goal is to get this difference number here down to zero. If you get that down to zero and you've gone over all your transactions, you can post. If this is not zero, you cannot post the statement. So um, now we got all our header information in here, but we're missing all the checks and deposits and transfers. How do we get them in? What we do is we go up to actions, suggest lines, and here we brings up this window. And what we want to get is both, that means both checks and deposits. We want them to come in here. And the posting date here, I can specify a range. And I'm just going to do everything up until the 3.31.17, which is the end of the statement. I could get anything from whenever. Uh, that's also acceptable, but let's say if we have any future items I don't want to put in there um, You know beyond uh, March 31st then I can just limit those by doing dot dot which means until uh, March 31st 2017 Okay, uh, just hit okay And it brings in my entries Now here in the checks, these are actual checks written out, the system. We have um, $5,000 written out to the Berry Farm and $20,000 written out to Lots of Oranges. Um, on my statement, I can see the 20000 has cleared, so I check clear. However, I don't see the 5000 has cleared, so we've mailed that to them. But they haven't cleared it. Okay, so I just leave that alone. Uh, then in my deposits, I have the uh, Canon Group. It's a collapsed deposit. That means that there were multiple checks that we got, but we deposited on one slip. So there is one number that comes into the back. And I see this number on there, so I check that off. There's also payments in this. So this screen can be a little bit confusing. It contains both deposits and payments that are made with wire transfers in one screen. 
Um, so these are wire transfer payments, not check payments. Uh, and they have all appeared. Wires are great. They clear immediately. That's better than text. Um, so that's all good. Now, let me now go up into the header and just refresh it. Now, I, what I just hit, did was hit F5 to refresh. Uh, because this doesn't automatically refresh as you're checking off. You just have to click into the header and hit F5 and it refreshes the numbers. Now I see that my total has gone down, or the difference has gone down to 200 bucks. Uh, 200 short. Where is that $200? So I go on my statement and take a look at what's going on there. And I see there's a $200 fee to the bank. Okay. That's one of those usual things. What we can do is put that into adjustment. So what right, we're going to do right now is make an adjustment for $200. So that's going to be out of chase. And it's going to be into, let me see, let me just pick a GL account for that, something appropriate. Um, You can just put that on administrative expenses. I should find some back expense here. Interest. That's a, okay. Uh, then we should be good. Let's see. Interest express. Oh, let's have somebody that is direct posted to. Okay, that's better. So it needed to be an account of obviously that we can directly post to. Um, and so we have two hundred dollars coming out of the bank account going to interest expense. And I'll have to put the posting date as proper: o three o one seventeen. Obviously, uh, put the description. And now this is an it's a transaction that hasn't been posted yet. I'm actually posting this transaction along with posting the back reconciliation as an adjustment. Uh, let me just take a look at what I have here. Now I got zero. Yes, I beat the game. So we're done with this uh, back reconciliation. All I have to do now is post it, uh, and. And I can move on to the next reconciliation if I have one. So let me go ahead and hit post here. Yes. And it's successfully posted. Now I'm done. Now I can go into cash management again here and take, take a look at my back accounts and actually go into the ledger entries and notice all of the opens have been cleared except this one. Because it's an outstanding check that hasn't been cashed. And if I go back here, um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. We can actually go into bank, and bank account reconciliations and see that it has cleared it, it moved it into posted already. Uh, and in cash management, bank accounts, navigate, I have posted reconciliations, and here I see that is posted, and I can view that to see what was reconciled on that. So I have full history, of course, right here, what I just did. So that was the first bank reconciliation for the Chase Bank in the Coffee Mug uh, company. Uh, went pretty well, and um, I hope you have no issues going onwards with your backup reconciliations. Thank you.